Permanent magnet rotor axial flux wind turbine actually save you 50% or more on your electric bills? Could this same 10 foot wind turbine actually be built by Joe Average? <laughs> Does a mechanical duck fart sparks? I think so. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. We're coming in for a landing here. These are just some drawings I drew up. Uh, show you how I done them here in a second um, this is a brake disc rotor don't ask me which one it is but this one's badly worn we aren't going to use this one the reason I am showing this one is these on the side all these little vent holes to keep the brake rotor cool there are 36 of them that's divisible by 12 and also divisible by 9 and that's a good thing that helped me to draw all these radial lines that come out from the center these are just some pictures of how I decided to uh, get my uh, magnet size and also the size of my coils. The coils that I show on this one are not the ones I'm going to use. Actually, the ones I'm going to use are going to be a little bit different shape. They're going to be pretty close to uh, the inside of the coil is going to be pretty close to the size of the magnet, just a little bit tapered in towards the bottom. You see here I've got... Uh, 14 gauge magnet wire I've clipped them and straightened them out very very tight that way I could sit there and put them down and get actual size of what my coils are going to be by knowing how wide so many layers of uh, magnet wrapping is going to be and then the thickness as well all this is documented so this is not the actual drawing that we're going to be using just this little slideshow here there's some measurements of some lines. I'll get into this and we'll draw a whole brand new one. I'll show you how to draw this up really fast. Those five dots in the center for the lugs. The good thing about this is you get a nice hub spindle and bearing. And then uh, two brake disc rotors. And 24 neodymium iron boron magnets. One inch by two inch by half inch. And 12 of them are going to go on each, of, uh, on each of the rotors. And then they'll be facing each other. And we'll show you how to cast the uh, stator. And like I said, this is just an introduction to us. So we're not really getting into everything here. I hope to have uh, centimeters and everything else for you. I thank you very much. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. <coughs> Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. I'll move a few things around here. Show you a few things. This is a neodymium iron boron magnet it is one inch by two inch by half inch notice this uh, nickel plating here which actually protects the magnet seeing as this neodymium iron boron is very unstable and it wants to corrode very fast this is probably from slapping or letting don't let anybody play with your magnets because it'll mess them up this once this nickel plating gets messed up, what it's going to do is going to corrode underneath and eventually your magnet might come loose. So, be careful with these. And these also, if you'll notice on my desk, there's no sharp tools of ferrous metal of any kind. Aluminum is okay. Uh, copper. Stainless steel is... This actually sticks to stainless steel. People say, stainless steel is not magnetic. It sure is. Just not as much. But anyway, I'll show you safety here. Number one, when you come up to put this on, you'll stick it up on the edge like this. It's much easier. Now this disc has been planed, or uh, it has been put on a lathe and milled out, leaving a 1 8 inch lip. And when you put these magnets on, you're going to see it takes two thumbs get it on there now it's not going to come this way no matter what you do that's why that eighth inch lip is there 
we're going to get into this. But right now I'm going to take this off. And when you put these on, you usually want a template that holds these, that separates them. So when you put them down, they'll try to go into each other. This is a good way to get them off. Grip it really tight and roll it. And now it's off. I'm going to put this one away for a second. spot don't let kids play with your magnets and usually you want to use gloves this surface will have to be recleaned again with a this surface will have to be recleaned again with a non uh, residual cleaner you look at this this is very thin profile all the way from where it bolts to the hub to the edge of the disc now mine, which I should have planed this side all the way down, left the eighth inch lip on. Come on. There we go. That's about right. I'll take this piece of wood and I'm going to show you something. Or I might just go ahead and make mine a little different than most people's. I put this down there. I've got about an eighth inch lip or an eighth inch gap there. And this is going to be the thickness of my stator material. And then the other one goes on the other side. I might just do it like this. Seeing as this, don't ask me what uh, what uh, what brand or what model make that this brake uh, disc came from, or the other one. They're the same. I don't know. I got them out of the scrap. I got the hub and spindle and everything. And that's what we're going to be working with. For now, I got this close. Put the magnet on it. Drew it. This is going to be on here. And this is going to be the shape of our coil right up to the edge. And I'm taking the black right off the lines. And then I'm going to taper in. And how much depends on when I do this next drawing. I'll do that with y'all on camera. And then this one goes on. And a crank runs through. And this becomes our coil winder. And it will be pretty decent. And here's the wire we're going to use. This is 11 pounds of 14 gauge double insulated 200 degrees Celsius magnet wire. Some people call it enamel wire, and uh, it's all copper, and that's what we'll be using. And I'll show you these drawings here. This red line goes all the way around here, is where my brake disc rotor comes to. And the, uh, it's also going to be close to the outside of my magnet. And then my coil has to run out, and you've seen with the uh, pieces of wire that I used to sit there and measure across to find out where they're at. I did a few other ones on the back side here. Here's the size of my magnet. Here's one I was thinking about the inside of the coil shape being this way. Then I was figuring this one, this is the one I'm going to do, and I'm going to taper the inside in. Another couple things you got to uh, do when you're designing, you got to figure out that you'll have one magnet in the middle of your coil and your next magnet is going to be over here. This one will be north facing up. This one's going to be south facing up. So your flux goes around. And the same thing around this way. This gives you a lot more power on your coil. If your magnets are right up against each other like that, because you've got too many of them, you're not going to get as much out of it. You're wasting a lot of magnet. And I'm going to show you another clip, an old clip, to show you what the main deal is about wise magnet use and full circular path and then uh, the next video we're getting into building and doing it all what it basically comes to is the, the flux comes in this way goes over here and comes back out so with these if I had two magnets sitting here both of these magnets are twice as strong and then with the other rotor on the other side, magnets against magnets uh, pulling towards magnets is a lot stronger than magnets pulling towards steel. And you've seen how strong this is pulling towards the steel. 
so you never want to get your arms or your fingers or your hands anywhere in between these magnets or the magnet rotors and you never want to store these within the full frame of what you see on this video and if this is what you can see that's too close <laughs> I'd keep them about two foot two and a half three foot and don't bring any tools one tool can hit hit the magnet rotor over here and be close to the other one pull them closer together and they're sliding and slam and if you're, you're in the middle of it you just lost your arm these magnets can break your fingers a whole bunch of them with the multiplication of the full magnet flux circle of the full magnet flux circle it comes a very dangerous thing many many pounds of pull you might as well drop a car on your arm or a motor anyway I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies many good things to you and yours I'm get this magnet off here <clears throat> it's a good thing to use gloves but I don't know where mine are at right now I just want to get this magnet off <sighs> if there were other magnets on here I wouldn't be doing this that's for sure uh, thank you much I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies hello I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies I'm building some 4L60E transmissions with a friend of mine, pulling them out and dropping them in, been making a bit. Well, he didn't need these. These are two rings that come inside one of them. And I looked at them and I saw the inside dimension right here where this could be screwed down nice and easy and attached to something else. I've got 16 magnet positions around and 16 magnet positions around on the other. I tried to bring one side close let them touch and then let these down gentle. Good thing there's lots of room in here. Keep your fingers from getting pinched. Basically, they ain't coming apart. I did it once before just for giggles. And I wound up having to move all the magnets. But I'll show you something. Why these magnets are so strong is they're going through here all the way over here back down here and back around again we're having a full circle of magnetic flux same here and here and here all the way around about the only way to get this apart without really uh, risking chipping the steel or damaging it really hard not going like this move the magnets Move them around to the other side. Now think through the one inch by two inch by three quarter inch, the big ones. Imagine the force that that would be coming down with. Might be able to go. Yeah. Oh. Don't want to get pinched by that. like taking these two and stacking them here and also taking these two and stacking them here making these ones twice as powerful and these ones twice as powerful and that right there is a smart way to use magnets get everything you can out of them let me show you something about this before we finish up none of the magnetic force is leaving the ring a decent sized backing, metal backing for the magnetic flux to flow through, make sure that all the magnetism is in the metal. I think we're close enough where I can get these apart. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. And it's a lot easier. I'll watch these magnets. They're just... I had a razor knife sitting on the desk earlier. Yeah. Find that way you don't leave a razor knife on there. And attack this thing that far away. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. We'll get into winding some coil stuff.